that together we can make a change. Keep your head up high. Keep your head up. I said together we gon' make a change. Don't you get discouraged. Keep your head up. I said together we can make a change. Keep your head up. Turn to your neighbor and say, uh, there's a prophet in the house. Turn to your neighbor and say, there's a preacher in the house. Turn to your neighbor and say, there's a pastor in the house. Turn to your neighbor and say, there's a moral leader in this country in the house. And then put your hands together for the Reverend Dr. Bishop William Barber. Hello, family. Hello, Mar March on Raleigh. HK on J, People's Assembly. It's good to see every one of you today. And those of you that are on the stage can come up a little closer. You know how we do it. We don't believe any one person ought to stand at the podium by themselves because this is not a one person show, this is the people show. As we come here this morning, I want to thank Reverend Dr. Spearman, the leader of the North Carolina NAACP, and all 200 of the coalition partners. Let's put our hands together. That'll help warm us up. I don't want you to leave because there are some, a few more people we need to hear from. And you know, when we think about being here, we're cold, but we can go back to a home, most of us. But what about those who have no place to go back to? We stand here for them. My brothers and my sisters, there is a common theme that runs through our most sacred text in the Bible. It is stand for the sake of the children. Stand for the sake of the children. You can find it in Psalms 146. It begins like this, blessed are those who help is the God of Jacob whose hope is in the Lord our God. And then in verse seven, the rabbis will tell you, it says, God upholds the cause of the oppressed, gives food to the hungry. And then verse nine says, God watches over the undocumented. Oh, it's in the book. God watches over the foreigner and sustains the children and the widow and the women. It's there in Isaiah, this call to stand for children and the vulnerable. In Isaiah 10, it reads like this in this message Bible. Woe unto those who legislate evil and who make laws that make people victims. Laws that make misery for the poor and rob the poor of their rights and make women and children their prey. Then over in the New Testament, there it is again, Jesus in Mount Mark chapter 10, people were bringing little children to him. He was putting his hands on him, but the disciples acting like ruthless politicians rebuked them and told them to get back. And Jesus said, let them come. Let the children come, don't you hinder them because anybody that doesn't receive a child and treat them right, they shall never themselves be right with God. Every one of these sacred texts of which at least two of them are honored by Muslims, Christians, and Jews, Isaiah and Psalms 146. Every one of them place the concern for the vulnerable, especially children, at the center of God's attention. And, it, and every one of them says that there is a judgment that comes when any nation or state doesn't care for children. Every one of these texts suggests that governments, communities, societies, nations are judged by how they treat the children who are the most vulnerable. This is an ancient fundamental cornerstone to building a just society. Biblically speaking, any society that carries out policies that hurts families and children is a failed society. But this is not just a biblical principle. 
among the most accomplished and fabled tribes of Africa, there was no tribe considered to have warriors more fearsome and more intelligent than the mighty Messiah tribe. It, you might think then if they were warriors, Rosalind, if they were warriors, maybe they didn't really care about the children. But the Messiah warriors had a saying, Kassirian Ingria. That's how they greeted one another. And they asked everybody, and how are the children? Their tradition was that no matter how great they were at war, and no matter how fearsome they were when they destroyed other people, if the children were not faring well, then the nation was not faring well. But it's not just in scripture. It's not just in the ancient tradition of the messiahs of Africa. It's even in the North Carolina Constitution. The one that every member of the legislature and every governor swears on Bibles to uphold. It's found right there, David, Article 11, Section 4. It says, beneficent provision for the poor, the unfortunate, and the children is the first duty, not the second, not the third, not the fourth, not the fifth, but the first duty of a civilized and Christian state. Our Constitution in North Carolina says it's not civilized, my God, to hurt the unfortunate. It's not civilized to hurt the poor. It's not civilized to hurt the children. It, the, the Constitution doesn't say it's, it's, it's just wrong or it's conservative or it's liberal or it's Republican or it's Democrat. It says it's not civilized. And for all those in the legislature that keep passing policies and claiming they're Christian but passing policies that hurt children, your own Constitution says it's not even Christian. It's not civilized for this state to deny or political leaders to deny beneficent provision for the poor and the children. It's uncivilized. Touch your neighbor and say, it's uncivilized. uncivilized. Touch your other neighbor and say, it's immoral. it's immoral. And I'm telling you by this standard, the leadership of the General Assembly is falling short. They're falling short of the very biblical standard they put their hands on. They're falling short of the ancient traditions of the oldest civilizations of Africa, and they're falling short of their own constitution. They're falling short of what they put their hands and, on the Bible and swore to uphold. Amen. In fact, if they don't take care of the children, they're just lying, and the truth ain't in them. And that is why, Dr. Spearman, you're right to keep pushing, and all of you are right to keep pushing. This movement can't stand down. Right. There are 4.7 million poor people in this state. 48% yes. poor, low income. 50% of all the children in this state are poor. 49% of all the women. 39% of all the white people. 62% of all the people, and yet, black people of color, and yet there are more white people in actual numbers that are poor than there are white. And if, the, and if that's what's happening to the adults, God knows what's happening to the children. 22% of all our children are poor, poor, poor. 26,000 homeless children, homeless children, trying to go to school, but then going home and living under, under the, in the alleys. It takes nearly two jobs and a half a week at minimum wage just to have a basic apartment to house your children. Nearly 25% of all of our children live in food insecure households. That means only what they eat at school is the best meal they get. Stella? 102,000 of our children in the 21st century are uninsured. Al, uninsured in the 21st century. 14 million poor children in this nation over 154 years after the Emancipation Proclamation. 
There are more than 1.3 million children from 0 to 18 who are enrolled in Medicare and health care. And yet we have legislators who want to cut health care. It's uncivilized. And when the current leadership denies health care to 500,000 families, living wages to those 80 percent of the people in North Carolina want a wage, a raise increase, a minimum wage, a living wage, and yet legislators who claim they're doing the will of the people will not even put raising the living wage on the ballot. They'll put trying to stop who somebody can marry on the ballot. They'll put change in the Constitution in unconstitutional ways on the ballot, but they won't put living wages on the ballot. It's uncivilized. Yeah. Yeah. And you give welfare to the corporations, That's right. and then you make the poor have to struggle through harsh so-called free market capitalism. And when you hurt the children, you hurt the future of a society. The future is made vulnerable. And that's why, my friends, all I came by today not to say much is don't y'all quit now. We've got some work we're trying to do around the rest of the country because they saw you all. And yeah. we got to go do it. It's, it's kind of a Macedonian call. It's, we got to spread it. But I need to know that y'all ain't going to quit. No. Our movement can't turn around. No. We can't stand down. We can't stop because it doesn't have to be this way. We must fight until the children are well, Dr. Spearman. You're exactly right. We must fight. I tell you today, as I look out on you, the reason I keep turning from side to side is every year about this time, I would see my baby brother somewhere in the crowd. Four weeks ago, at this very moment, I was standing up looking at a casket and preaching his eulogy. 46 years old, diagnosed with pancreatic cancer on December the 3rd, left here on January the 3rd. My baby brother, I'm the one that gets the threats. I'm the one that has certain physical ailments, but he left. The baby brother I prayed for. I now join many of you in knowing what it's like to lose a sibling and a younger sibling. I now join you. I prayed for my brother, and I never thought the day would come where I would have to preach over what I prayed for. God help me here. But as I stand here, I can't see him physically, but I see him in you. And I remember 10 days before he died, he called me in the room, and he said, Billy, that's why our name we called each other. He was Chucky, I was Billy. He said, I got three things I want to tell you. He said, I want to thank you for everything you've ever done for me as a brother. He said, number two, I want to let you know I love you as my big brother. He said, I don't know if I'm going to make it back to North Carolina and where the folk are gathering, but if you speak, tell them. Tell them don't stop. Tell them for me. My brother went to be with the Lord a few weeks ago. And I come by to tell you, don't stop. Until every family has full and protected voting rights. And we can elect leaders who care first about the children and the vulnerable. Our work is not done. Don't stop. Until every child has health care, our work is not done. Don't stop. Until every family has a living wage, until every LGBTQ gay child feels love just like they are. Don't stop. Our work is not done yet until Latino children are not living in the fear of them damn ice agents coming in their houses and taking them out of their home. Don't stop! Oh God, until every Palestinian child and every Jewish child can be loved and protected to the fullness of their humanity. Don't stop! Our work is not done until every child receives a, a, a highly a well-funded, diverse public high quality education don't stop our work is not done until every child in this state where they live where we live in this state it is not easier to get a gun than it is to feed a child don't stop so i just came by to say clinton for 12 years now 13 we've held this coalition together 
the mall march on Raleigh and this coalition. Look at the sun coming out. Glory. Yeah. The mall march and this coalition. For 12 years, we've held it together. For four years, we went to jail together. We put it on the line of together. And we don't have time for foolishness now. Anybody that's want to get in meetings and have foolishness, tell them to go to heaven or somewhere. We ain't got time for it. We're still down here in North Carolina, and we've got work to do. And this is no time to stop. Whether you're young or old or black or white or brown or Asian or native or gay or straight, we can't stand down now. We can't sit down now. Do I have a witness? We can't stop registering now. We can't stop going to the state house now. We can't stand down now. So after the last speakers, leave this march, but go tell everybody. Go tell them up in the mountains. Go tell them in the south and in the east, from Buncombe County to Brunswick County, from Greensboro to Greenville, from Forsyth to Fayetteville. Tell everybody our work is not done. We can't stop now. If you would, let me channel my 1970s music tradition. Tell them what the songwriter said. Wake up, everybody. No sleeping in bed. No more backward thinking. Time for thinking ahead. The world has changed so very much from what it used to be. There's so much hatred, war, and poverty. Wake up all the teachers. The world won't get no better if we just let it be. The world won't get no better. We got to change it. Wake up all the doctors. Wake up all the builders. Wake up all the millennials. Wake up all the marchers. Wake up all the mothers, wake up all the fathers, wake up all the preachers, wake up all the rabbis, wake up the imams, wake up the pulpit, wake up North Carolina, wake up this world, go back home, trouble your legislators, wake them up, because for the sake of the children, we can't stand down now, not now, not ever, not now, not ever. Together we can make the change.